Hi, John. Hi. So, um, I haven't seen you for a while. No, how are you? Uh, <laughs> how, to, <laughs> how to sum that up? Uh, not great, actually. I've, yeah, uh, we're having a really difficult time. Um, my mum is not, it's, it's just, she's not, she's not that well. And, no. um, yeah, she's, she's very, very elderly and, um, she's 89 and, uh, she's in, you know, by anyone's standards, what we call the end of life phase. Um, and, uh, she's got a really good care team with her. Um, and they're now with her 24 hours a day. Um, so I know that she's in really good hands. Um, but they are on a kind of alert to call me if um, things get worse. Of course, of course. And it's a sad and a very, very sad. But at times like this, you have to think about, you have to celebrate your mum. Your mum's having and had such a fabulous life. And oh, you've had John. such a fabulous life with her. But yes, it's sad and it's very, it's kind of hurts here, doesn't it? When you think okay. about it. But, okay, <laughs> yeah. oh, sorry, but, but you've also so, got to think about the, the happy, the happy, you know, yeah. think of all those amazing times you had in the house, in the country, and you've had in the flat and you still have today. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. it's a kind of, you have to celebrate. It's, I know it's sad and I know you, you just want to cry and you want to scream at the world, but actually you have to think about what a fantastic, fantastic life she and you have had together. That's, yeah, you're right. At the moment, it just feels like she's so, um, she's so close to the end of, end of her time. Mm. And um, in fact, you know, here I can share with viewers, you know, my mum was a writer, is a writer, yeah. and she wrote children's books and things. And uh, the books that my mum is, yeah, it says on it really clearly, not for sale. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the, you know, my mum wrote these really lovely books about pigs, and she's really well known, actually, for yeah. being a writer. She's a fantastic, fantastic writer. And in the, these books, this is really sweet. I'm just going to show readers this. This is so gorgeous. <laughs> they were based on, like, a pig family. And this family of pigs, viewers can see that, yeah. are based on me and my friends and my brothers. Oh. And look at this here. This is really sweet. I think I can see it because okay. little pig on the playing the violin is me, and there, uh -huh. uh, uh, with his fingers in his ears, <laughs> is the littlest pig, who's really my brother Ben. <laughs> because oh. I, I was really bad at the violin. I can imagine. Um, <laughs> did she do the drawings as yes. well? Yes. Because we, what we have to also tell the viewers is that my house, every single room in my house, all the way up the staircase, in the kitchen, in the living room, there are, well, they're not paintings because they're all sorts of things, aren't they? Yes. There's like pencil drawings, charcoal drawings, pastel drawings, watercolours, all done by your mum. Yes. She's a fantastically talented lady. Yeah. And um, a true kind of life force. And... Um, I'm extremely proud of her. And I got like, I think many of my She went through her ages, like much more convincing. Yeah. Yeah. And especially to a younger reader now. Um, and uh, anyway, <laughs> I sit down next to my mum when Polly has finished editing. And this is about two years ago. So my mum was actually, you know, kind of in a better healthy state than um, she is now. And I sit down next to her and I say to her, Mum, you know, um, I've, I've got... Um, <laughs> Polly has been like editing my book and uh, it's just been amazing. She's really, really good at it like this. And mum goes, well, that's really good. You know, kind of clearly impressed. And, yeah. then, I, <laughs> and then I said, the trouble is mum, um, she, she was so good at it that I have a feeling she's going to be like better at it than either, either you or me. And she said, we can't have that. 
<laughs> and she's so competitive. Oh, is that what she's going to do? Is that what Polly's going to do? I said to Polly, I don't know what Polly's going to do. I've like, she said in the moment she's studying Bristol, studying Bristol. She's no. at Bristol studying English. Oh, okay. So she's another language. Yeah. She's, yeah. And, and infuriatingly to me, she didn't go to Leeds, which is where I wanted her to go. Oh. She's got her own mind. Bad thing that. Yeah. Good anyway, for her. Good yeah, she's, she's gone to Bristol and um, she's doing, you know, really well. And gosh, you know, all the kids, let's face it, have had like such a tough time over the mm. pandemic. Um, it's really impacted people in so many different ways. Um, and nobody's had the same experience. Nobody can be inside anybody else's head. No. Um, but, uh, you know, I think it's fair to say that the people who are poorest, have had the worst time um and you know i think it also actually fair to say that women have had a really really tough time i'm a woman mm -hmm. women do a lot of caring and um so you know this is not me being you know kind of <laughs> feminist i just think like the nurses and people like that who were on the front line you know have had like a really really tough time and and now um they're sort of you know and then they had their children all at home sort of studying around them and things and all sharing space and if you were in london in a council flat you couldn't go outside you no. know it's been a very very difficult few years for everybody but without wanting to get too political about it yeah and here we can see actually what's quite funny is my teacups it's what people do they drink tea when they need comfort I've just done that automatically. I've picked up a cup of tea. How and that's, funny. that's what my sort of books have all over them is teacups. And I've done it so much over the last few days. Anyway, um, people, uh, you know, have all had different experiences. But I, I do sort of feel that those who've been able to lock themselves away in like enormous estates with like um, a few dogs and so on. Have had a and places to walk. Yeah, yes, yes. yeah, and so on. Um, people like Dominic Cummings have had a, a like kind of different pandemic than um, people who, uh, you know, uh, have been in a high rise, some, you know, with 10 kids and so on. So yeah. without getting too political, um, I think that um, it's been really hard for people um, in a myriad of different ways. And so I'm going to have a cup of tea, actually, slurp. Um, but so I'd just like to ask you, John, how, how you think, because your sort of skill set and everything is sewing and so on and so forth. And again, let me just remind people, this is, oops, John's book. Of the way, that's it. That's it. Now I can see it because we're on a double screen. Yeah. Um, John's got Threads of Life. Um, right, so which is sort of on sale everywhere at the moment and doing actually brilliantly. Um, and his experience and everything is working in theatre and so forth. Um, but getting back to the point, um, how you think that like the kind of things that you talk about in your book um, can help people relax and um, chill out and calm down and how they can sort of benefit their mental health and mm -hmm. physical health obviously um because i got asked the other day why i was handing someone a, a patchwork quilt to repair and i thought oh well they obviously don't like sewing and they didn't um but i actually find sewing is really really good to calm down and you know <laughs> i sew things that mean a lot to me as well i repair them not very well mind i have to say but yeah. I, I do love sewing. And actually, I wouldn't have got involved in doing your book um, quite seriously if I didn't love sewing. And you, you know that, and I know that. Mm. And that's how we sort of reconnected. So um, what is it about, about your book? Um, what are the things that you think kind of make, yeah, really help people to sort of come into their own space? I think what it is mainly is during the pandemic, we noticed a huge rise in people doing 
sewing, not only dressmaking, but quilt making, bag making, doll making, all sorts of things like that. And I think it's because basically when you pick up a needle or switch your sewing machine on everything, you concentrate, but not horrible concentration, not like learning to do your revision or your homework or something like that. You sit down because you're doing something you absolutely love doing. Yep. And for the amount of time you're sitting there sewing it, doing it, creating it, your mind can't think about, because you're loving it, you're so engrossed in what you're yes. doing. Yes. But your mind, you can't, yes, so the world problems are still going to be there. Your family problems are still going to be there. The fact you're on your own in the pandemic is still going to be there. But you can sit down at your dining room table with your sewing machine or in your sewing room if you're lucky enough to have a sewing room and literally just immerse yourself in fabric, in colour, yeah. in creating something. And like you're saying, it's not only it's not only the sewing that people love, because the, the sewing community is a really, really generous. So people make quilts and they put their heart and soul yes. and a lot of money and then they gift it. They yes. gift it. They just and I'm like, if I'd spent three weeks making that, there's no way I'd be giving it away. But it's this whole gifting thing. So not you can be involved in the sewing world and hate sewing, but actually reap the benefits of the things that are being made to you. One thing, for instance, right, like my friend Francesca works, or did work with um, children who'd been severely um, uh, abused, right? And she needed therapy dolls. And she said to me, oh, do you know where I can get a hold of some? I put the word out to my ladies and gentlemen and said, oh, I need little families of therapy dolls. I need a man, a woman, a child, a boy and a girl. And literally, I thought we'll get, oh, we'll get a few of them she got something like two and a half thousand dolls to be able to distribute. Wow. And, but it's fantastic. So people sat and made these exquisite, exquisite little dolls, all yeah. with clothes on that you have to be able to take the clothes off now, to have yeah. or something like that. But then she, Francesca's been able to share them to all the people who do her job. And yeah. they're not they're not supplied with them by, by the government or anything like that. If they want to use therapy dolls, they have to supply them themselves. Yeah. So for, completely for free, my ladies and gents made well, thousands, thousands of these dolls. They love making them, post them to me. I took them to Francesca and Francesca distributed them. And they're all over the country now, all being used for, for therapy for, to help kids who've been that abused. Is, you know what's really sweet about that as well is that my stepmother, Dillis, and I think you don't know this, is a child psychotherapist. Oh. So she has like therapy dolls in her office. She's 86 now and she's just like given her last sort of public audience if you like she's still working at yeah. 86 you well know. don't you want to be don't you want to still be active and doing things yes. really? yeah i really do and you know um i really do and i missed actually delis's sort of talk um but it was actually great because i um was able to be there via zoom um and you know how people were speaking about her and so on was so so touching mm -hmm. um, and, um, you know, I love my stepmother. In fact, of all the elder members, the next generation up from me, I'm 60. She's really, you know, she's the person I can still talk to because she's so, she's so on it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, she's very, very bright still. Um, so, yeah, she uses those therapy dolls. And um, actually, the therapist who I see from time to time, she has them in her room. So I totally understand because actually, and also at the moment, my mum is, um, you know, in such a sort of end of life phase. And they do sort of say that you sort of go start at childhood and then you sort of go back. Yeah. To your baby. But, you know, she's got this little thing at the moment and it's so adorable um, that she clutches to her. That's like a little hot water bottle um, and um, her care team have two so that they can recycle them and they're like uh one's like a little dog and one's like a little um sheep and uh i know that my her brother came to see her recently and was you know sad to see her like sort of in decline but actually she's not as bad as he thinks um and and i he may even watch this video so it's really you know useful to have this conversation she, mm -hmm. she just she loves those little um hot water bottles so you know she kisses it regularly like it's a little toy oh and she holds it it keeps her warm you know this winter we're cold aren't we mm -hmm. and, you know heating bills are really high um so little hot water bottles that are like 
sheep and um, goats and so on and so forth. We can get people knitting and doing those. Well, no, no, because there's a whole thing about every so often I get my ladies to do a new charity. We're doing beads, uh, beads of courage for children at the moment where we will make something. But uh, one of the ones that people want to do are little hot water bottle carriers. Yeah, there you are. <laughs> you that. There you yeah. are. So, I mean, I think, you know, the reason I wanted to do your book, you know, and we reconnected is, you know, we've got so many sort of overlaps mm. and, and a lot of our um, audiences are, are very similar, um, you know, and I just wanted to also add, actually, that the we have an elderly lady up our road, Angela, who is listening to your audio book at the moment. Oh, wow. And um, she's 80. Um, and she, uh, she yes, yeah, she definitely wanted the audio version um, because she didn't have time to read it and her mm -hmm. eyesight isn't that great so that she can listen to it rather than read it. Yeah. Uh, so that was very interesting to me. And she, what she, she and I are really good friends and so is Tom. We're only like three houses away from each other. Yeah. So in its own way, Brighton is a little village. And um, yeah, Angela knits all the time um that's her thing and so you know i interrupt her knock on the door check she's okay um and i know she's okay she does um tom does a lot of work for her um she's sort of in our bubble if you like yeah, yeah. and um yeah she does knitting and she watches tv and things like that you know she does relaxing activities mm -hmm. and that's what she's doing and she's knitting clothes at the moment for her grandchildren yeah so it's a really sort of good example of you know and she's not she's not loaded not at all no. Angela but it's a win-win again it's a win-win she loves knitting and yeah. her grandchildren get clothes yeah. so it's, it's that double-sided it's not like uh, it's like I shouldn't really say this but people who make little toy soldiers they're just going to put in a glass cupboard you think you're making them for your own pleasure sort of thing whereas knitting yes you're making quilts and clothes and everything for your pleasure but then you gift them on and I think that's that double-edged kind of lovely yeah. it, you know but I, I mean, actually, you know, to, to defend the people that make toy soldiers, you see, yeah. they, you know, they're worth like the ones like from the 1960s are probably worth a fortune. Yes, they are. But you still have them for yourself in a glass cabinet. You haven't got that joy. There's nothing better than giving something, is there? Yeah. Oh, I giving think something yeah. you know that person's going to love. Yes. But the trouble is you don't necessarily know what someone else is going to love. And, you know, I can get presents wrong for people. Oh, yes. Um, just... You know, but that's why my patchwork quilt, you see, means masses to me because it was on my mum's bed. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, so I'm going to spend hours like mending it um, because it's a really special thing to me. And then, you know, with my not quite in your level, like sewing skills, but I'm not yeah. bad. Um, mm -hmm you know, then I can gift it on to, you know, one of my grandchildren. Not yeah. my grandchildren. I'm not having grandchildren. I'm sorry, I'm getting that the wrong way around. Yes. You know, my nieces or someone else in the family, the next generation down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and they'll know it's history. And my house is full of things that were made by the generation previously. And I, that's another reason that I absolutely love, like, things that are made with tenderness, you know, and I can see um, that they were done, you know, by hand and so on. And, you know, the fact that something's made by hand and actually, you know, is, is meaningful, but it's also, you know, we can be sure that it wasn't done in a factory in, you know, um, where, where people are being treated really badly. Yeah. Ever, yeah. You know, I mean, there are the political sort of ramifications of having handmade stuff is really significant all around the world well also <clears throat> yeah but also made with love you know they yeah. made it because they want to make it it's not like oh i've got to go to the factory today to make this and yeah. it gets turns out of the box those have been and also it's just visit the actual physical cost like in time and in fabric and in wadding and in backing and everything it's, <laughs> it's a huge thing but i just think i just think any craft like that, that i talk about in my book or just, I just think it's such, even, even like sewing circles, you know, yes. the amount of my ladies who are on their own and, and during lockdown, they had to do them on Zoom, but they have yes. sewing circles. Yes. I started off a Facebook Live every Sunday afternoon 
and originally it was so long. It was how to make masks, how to make scrub bags. Yes, yes of course, yeah. And now, and now we don't sew on it. We literally, hundreds of us, just meet on a Sunday afternoon on, on Facebook Live and just gossip away about food, about what we've been up to, what people's families have been up to. <laughs> and it's such a love. And all the ladies say to me, oh, we're so grateful for you giving up your time. Oh, we're so great. And I was like, no, I do it because I enjoy it. You know, it's like I wouldn't do it if I thought, oh, God, I've got to do another Facebook Live. I do it because I love hearing all about what they're up to as well. Do you right. know what I mean? That's kind oh, of lovely. two-way thing. But we literally just, I mean, if anyone just happened to tune in by accident, they'd, like, they'd be like, what's this all about? Because they talk about weather, we talk about food, what, what, what <laughs> the telly. we talk about people's outfits <laughs> on the telly. And it just goes on an hour of gossiping on a Sunday afternoon. Right. I've just managed to break my desk. Oh, no. I know, but it's all right. I'm, I'm like... <laughs> I break the same thing the whole time because I put my foot up on it. Right. And, um, it's it's not a, it's not a mega thing. It's a door it's a doorknob. It's a desk drawer thing that's come off, and I'll refix it for the hundred and seventieth time with super glue. Oh. Um, and um, one day my husband will actually give it the attention it needs. He's slightly better at these things than me. Um, although I get kind of cross and <clears throat> I think he would too. You know, by putting people too much in categories, I'm yeah. actually quite a good good um dab hand at like diy and things because i lived on my own for years mm -hmm. and um you know so i i do know how to put up some shelves and stuff but i don't do it very thoroughly <laughs> no i i have all the plans to do it and then it's like get halfway through and think was this taking longer than i thought it was going to take yeah. and i don't think that's finished me Yes, and Tom will, will do it and he'll like really do it and put dedication into it. So if we're painting a room, you know, hilariously, I'll just go in and sort of slap the paint on because what I want is colour. Yeah. He'll go, how have you done it like that? Sort of yeah. thing. And so when Tom paints, um, you know, he does all the preparation. He, he doesn't like do a botch job, basically, which oh, would be done. I, uh, when I, in my Twickenham house, I uh, went to take the downstairs <laughs> toilet and I got a roll on. I said, oh, this is great fun. And I did the whole of the middle section like that and then got bored. So I never did the top <laughs> and never did the bottom bit and I had to get someone in to finish it yeah. because I was never going to finish it. Yeah. I mean, you know, I think we're probably actually showing our, our viewers. I don't know how long we've been recording for. We've been on um, quite a while, I think, but you know, I don't know yet. Okay. Um, but we need to talk about this. Well, we sort of do, yes, but we are. Oh, we do, we do, because it's gorgeous, because it's just arrived. Mine's just arrived this week, see, so I've got your other books. I've oh. got your anxiety book, and I've got your menopause book. And, of course, I've got all your novels from way back in the day, because I was around hey. when you did your first one, wasn't I? You remember? Yeah, of course you and were. Then, and then we were talking about this the other day when we were chatting, and you said you very kindly sent to me. And it's a gorgeous, gorgeous little book. And I can say, and I, I think people have a, a bit of a stigma, don't they, about being... I, I'm not I'm not an expert like you and your your colleagues, but I think people have a stigma saying, Oh, I'm depressed. Like yes. people use it too glibly and like they could be having a bad day and they're like, I'm so depressed, I'm so depressed. Yeah. Or there is a huge like people are embarrassed to say yes. Yes. I'm feeling lonely, yeah. I'm feeling this, I'm feeling I have yeah. all these feelings. And I think it's so important to have a little book like this that someone could just sit and dip into. Because like you said, our books, my book is a dip into book. This is a dip into uh, book as well. You don't have to read the whole thing because you can just go to the, the beginning. And it's read, can reading. you actually show readers? Because they will then see. Yeah. Um, um, right. yeah, yeah, there you go. There you go. Look, so if you've actually seen, is it back to front? No, that's the right way around. Okay, on my screen it's back to front. But literally, if you're just feeling a little bit like kind of, if you're in, I always call it dark cloud syndrome. And sometimes oh. you can sit there and you think, oh, I've got this horrible grey cloud over me and I don't know why, I don't know why. And you let it fester. If you just go to page 197, Pit of Despair, you can just read that little oh. bit about it. Do you know what I mean? And I, if somebody gave me a book on anxiety, depression, menopause, yeah. whatever, I'd look at it and go, oh, it's like a self-help self book, isn't it? You start at the beginning thinking, oh, I'm not even halfway through yet. And I'm not. Whereas yeah. this one, not everything, not everything in there is going to be apt to what, what I find useful, yeah. what, what you'll be feeling at the same time. So what's brilliant is you can just dip into it because like, it's like this, right? Now I know this is, this one's here, it's called disease and depression, right? I'm not diseased, but I've got a horrible, this is me being honest now, I've got a horrible rash and the doctor doesn't know what it is, but it's, it, it, it's affecting 
here, I can't sleep properly. I can't do my job properly. I can't. And it's because it's there all the time. It's really bringing me down. But just to be able to dip in and go, oh, I'm not alone. I'm not. Because yeah. when, when you're at your worst, if at four o'clock in the morning, you think it's only me. I, I, you know, I'm the only person in the world feeling like this. We don't have to be because you can pick this up. And all the little drawings that have been done by you as well are so cute because they're quite funny, really, aren't they? Yeah, they. So, uh, we allowed, like, there are three books in that series. And I worked really closely with a, a lovely editor called Nina, who will watch this. Um, and um, of the three books that we've just uh, published, that one is doing them, selling the most. Um, and uh, so there's, ma there's Making Friends with Anxiety and the Menopause. And it's really been interesting for me to watch how the sales are going. Oh, yeah. And the uh, depression one is selling the most. Um, oh, that's the menopause one. Look, he's got them all. And there's the cup of tea on the anxiety one. You went very quickly, but that's fine. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. But also, did, well, didn't one of your novels have cups of tea on the front? Yes. Well, that's here somewhere. It's well, next to Jackie, one morning. Yeah, next to Jackie Collins, I think it is at the moment. Go and get I'll it. In a minute for you, anyway. It's on the shelves here. The shelves are so full. My yeah, God, you can see mine. I think people yeah. can behind me. Anyway, yeah, yeah, teacups has been my big sort of thing. <coughs> um, here's one moment one morning, actually. Oh, oh there you go. Yeah. yeah, that's it on old fashioned CD. Oh, um, bless, bless it. Um, that's in the days long before audiobooks really had taken off. So um, it's read by someone called Alison Reed, and I haven't really um been involved in that audio recording and whereas with your book we did it like together it was great yeah um and it got involved so many people <laughs> um anyway so it's really interesting this thing about formats as well as having the right format that suits you um at the time that you're in um mm. so i think it's good to be on as many formats as possible um and and the world that we live in at the moment is like very global, um, you know, so different languages and so on. We have, you know, Google that can translate for you immediately and so on. It's just mm -hmm. you know, the global world. I'm trying to think how to sum this up. It's an increasingly kind of global economy and a global world. And so there are women in China who are making dolls and things but we want to know that they're like women who are making dolls like in good conditions and not like in a factory where they're being made to work really close to each other and then the factory is going to catch fire you know yeah. we, we we sort of want to make sure that people are in good conditions where wherever they are and so forth so um getting back i suppose to the subject of <laughs> needlework and so on and depression um I think um, anything that can kind of help um, bring you into your body um, is really helpful. So your rash, actually, is probably anxiety related. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, sure is. Yeah, and actually, you know, there are products that I can recommend. Here we are. This is an immediate recommendation. This product, which is Aproderm. What's it called? Aproderm. Yeah. Is and I, I'm going to recommend it to our um, team that look after mum. I really love this because it's made from oats, so it's vegan. And my stepfather, my father in law died in really bad circumstances, and it doesn't have any petrol in it. So it actually means, and that sounds like what does that mean? But actually, he set himself on fire. So, um, it's like really good if you've got eczema. So make a note of it. Yeah. Um, so suitable from birth and you can use it. Um, see, some of these words don't make sense to people and I completely get that. But it says on it actually vegan. Yeah. Uh, and um, because somebody else said to me the other day, you know, I found this really good cream, you know, and basically more or less elbow, elbowed me out of the way when I sort of suggested this one. Um, and I'm going to insist that she uses this, this one um, because it isn't a question of whether you smoke or not um, that you might set yourself on fire it's it's much more subtle than that you know and a lady was found 
in in bed who'd been using like a, a cream like that she was putting on her legs and she'd like fallen asleep anyway it doesn't you know the detail of it doesn't matter but the whole house yeah. was burned down well uh, i have to say i when i came back last night i picked up my cream for the doctor the new cream that they've prescribed and it's literally it says in great big capitals on the outside that you know don't go near fireplace don't, don't go near this don't go and i tell you petrol. that tom tom you're not tom, tom, john john is that this is something i feel so passionately about and i know tom's family do that we campaigned to get that made bigger and you'll get me really emotional there because oh, right. we we made no it's fine we we made sure that's what tom's sister did <coughs> and everything when this happened to brian um you know and i spoke to my gp about it because i have a good relationship with the gp i've been you know going to the same gp for a long time um you know there was there was a lot of kind of campaigning to make sure that people were aware not to go near fire because yeah. it could, you could be like um just turning on a gas ring actually and if you're yeah. using like a skin cream a lot then you know it's not about smoking it's no. about like you use it john on you and um you need to make sure that you know you don't smoke i don't think you know no. you to make sure that it's like well, like this sort, parabens for yeah, yeah, no, no, we'll do, definitely. It's a weird, isn't it? We came on here to talk about books. We've ended up talking about my rations. But but it's quite true because it, it, it's also, like I put my pyjamas on yes. after I put my cream on, but my pyjamas are now on the floor by the washing machine. But if there's anything, if the tumble dry, you know what I mean? It could be, that, that, that'll be covered in it now as well, won't it? You know yes. what I mean? And it's so, to do with, anyway. uh, as well. Yeah, it's to do with how hot a wash you put things on. Yeah. And yeah. everything so it really yes and bedding and so on it can really get kind of soaked into it yeah um, you know it doesn't um it's just that you need to know you know what that that like petrol you know vaseline and so on they are not they they have a flammatory aspect to them yeah and, um you know when people buy things they need to be aware of what they're buying and and the trouble is that a lot of us and I do it too you know we don't look at the small print so we made you know we really sort of made sure that doctors and things um were much more aware yeah and then at the lettering and things on things that were flammable was made bigger and that yeah because yeah, nothing was said in the doctor surgery when they were they said oh you just need this because they gave you one cream which didn't work so oh, you need this cream that was it they said you'll put it on the morning night use it in the shower blah, blah. no mention of you, well, they don't. They know I don't smoke, but you know what I mean. It's like don't go near the cooker while you're wearing it. Don't go near the heater yes. while you're wearing it. None of that. It was None only because I read it because I was looking at what I was putting on my body. There you go. Right. So <laughs> we probably sold a few extra things <laughs> of um, that cream, Aproderm. Yeah. Um, Aproderm. Yeah. Aproderm. Aproderm. Yeah. And actually, yeah, I'd be no. really, really happy to sell more of those because I want to raise awareness of it. I'm, you know, Tom and I are vegan as best we can be you know yeah. you know i've never quite understood what they mean by vegan wine because isn't all vi wine vegan no it's got um blood in it I wine's know. got blood in it doesn't it, it anyway depends. i'm vegetarian have been since i was four so you know kind of I, i'm not vegan. you were born four 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 uh, it happened when my mum had the twins and she came home and i haven't eaten meat since it's really weird meat or fish or anything i don't eat any of it i haven't since, since that day it's all psychological. I have to go and see a, a, a not a clairvoyant, a therapist about it. Wow, I think that's so interesting. Yeah. Um, I don't know what the time is, John. It's ten forty-six right now. If you're watching this at night time, it's not ten forty-six at night. We're recording this at ten forty-six in the morning. Okay. Um, I think you know viewers have only got like so long. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, no, I'm fascinated. I'm loving oh, no, it. I can carry on I've forever. I've talked about your book and my book, and we've talked about cream, we've talked about your mum, your lovely mum, and everything. It's fantastic. Yeah. Um, so, my book, actually, one thing I definitely want to say is, it, is, no, that, go, go. is that that book, my book, and this probably is the most important thing, is um, on offer all week. It's 99p, and, and this is, um, it's on offer on all... Um, What's the word? Platform. All platforms, um, yeah. but as an ebook. Right. Okay. So ebook ninety nine p. Yeah. Everywhere. everywhere. Well, how much is it if I want to buy the book book? 
book book, um, the prices go up and down. Oh, okay, so, I noticed that on Amazon, yeah. Yeah, it's all controlled, you know, that all of these yeah. things work together. Um, but roughly, on the ballpark, where are we looking? Are we looking at a tenner? No, it's much less than that. Oh, okay. Well, that's it's good. Like, and my question is, who have you written it for? Who, who would, like, if people are sitting at home thinking, oh, I don't need a book about depression, but actually, who's it, who's it written for? Who, were you, who did you have in mind when you were writing? I wrote it, I wrote it for everybody, um, right. actually. So, um, and this, again, is, you know, really quite interesting, is that, um, so you might find it interesting if you're a parent and you've got a, a child who's really um, low, um, I would never, I wouldn't put a kind of age limit on it. There's nothing in it, you know, that's really sexy. Um, yeah. But, you know, there's, a, there's only, um, you know, you need to be a certain age to probably understand it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but you know, a parent lots... for a child, it might help the parents yeah. understand what the child's yeah. going through yeah. without actually giving the book to the child at all. Yes. It might be that the parent reads it or a grandparent reads it or a friend reads it and thinks, oh, do you know what, my friend such and such, Yes. I see that in her yes. and just having a conversation, a cup of tea, popping yes. around for a cup of tea. Don't even say that you've read a book about depression to start with. Just introduce it, what you've yes. learned in the book, into the conversation. And actually, this is another sort of interesting thing before we wrap up. Yeah, yeah. Actually, it's, I think it's really often as a gift, much nicer to give a book. A book. So, um, you know, that's why I was really keen to get your book to its readers before Christmas um, as a book um, yes. because that's what people like to give is to wrap up a thing. Yes, um, but isn't it funny that most people who've bought the book have also bought the um, audio as well? Yes. Like, it's like your friend, so many people have messaged me going, oh, I've got the book, got the book, but I need it in audio as well. And we need to say, don't we, it's coming out on an ebook soon as well, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, we do. We need to say that. We're doing an ebook. I'll let you know when. I'll let you know when. Don't worry. We just need to, I just need to get a plug. No, you're right, because, you know, we, we make our decisions as the people we are um, to, to do these things at a speed that we can do where we don't, like, drive ourselves potty. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we do look after ourselves. Because that's the other thing is, you know, that's a really key message in, in the books. And, you know, I would say to people listening out there, watching whatever they're doing, um, is that, you know, you can't look after anybody until you can look after yourself. It's that thing of like, put on your own life jacket first, is what they said when I've been sort of at my most anxious, is yeah. but if you're a parent and a plane is coming down, you put your own jacket on first and then yeah. you have your kids. And it's, it's, you know, a hard decision to make, obviously. Sorry, I saw... Oh, we'll bleep that bit. We'll bleep that bit. I'm really bad with language. We'll have to bleep me. Yeah. We could never come on live telly, could you? The other thing I'm going to say as well before we go is there's no, there's no immediate... Well, there is a rush to get this one because it's on offer at the moment, yeah. but they're not books that are going to go out of fashion. So no. the books that are going to be around on the bookshelf for donkeys. There's nothing that's going to go out of fashion on either of these. No. So, so it's not like an immediate rush rush. But if you want either of them or any of other Sarah's other books, I'd go because they're a gorgeous little. Um, and also, like we said earlier, Sarah also does uh, novels as well, which yes, are yes. a little bit racy sometimes. So they have a little star rating on the front. When in one of them, when she goes to New York, I nearly dropped the book. It was a bit raunchy, but that's by the by. It's not completely by the by. It's very funny. I sent that to my friend Jenny to read on the bus. And, uh, you know, I sent it as a manuscript. And she was a bit like, she dropped it. I got my <laughs> <laughs> Just a word of warning. There's a little bit of uh, Fifty Shades of Grey in a couple of them. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Anyway, John, I'm going to say goodbye. Because goodbye. I will bore people to death yeah. just naturally yeah, otherwise will. um but let me stop this recording then for people so we're going to say goodbye bye all right bye <laughs>